I'll be showing 20 tips and tricks for Outlook 365. Outlook for the web includes board view, email, calendar, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. To get to Outlook for the web, I'm on the office.com homepage and I'm gonna click on Outlook here. The first tip is the new Outlook board view. First, go to the calendar in the upper left here. Next, go to the upper right, drop this down, and you're gonna see this new board option. Click here, and this is gonna let you keep everything in one place. Board view is like a nice project management tool built right into Outlook. So click let's start. Now by default, I get a set of parts. So I've got a calendar part, tasks, a note, and some tips, and I can move these around the screen. So if I click here, maybe I wanna move this over here. I can go and remove this one. I can drag my tasks around. Maybe I wanna resize this right here, make it a little bit bigger. So it's like this little project management board. What's also nice is you can zoom in and out. So down here, I can zoom out a little bit, and now I've got this canvas by which I can click and drag stuff around. I can also add things to my board. So maybe I wanna show all here. I wanna add a clock. I got a clock here, we'll add a city in Bellevue, and we'll zoom back in a little bit. You can change the colors of things. So maybe for note here, I wanna change the color and make it purple, like one note. And maybe I wanna go over here and add one more thing to my board. Let's add a goal. So here's my goal, finish this video. And I can set a date and all sorts of fun stuff. Now I'm not gonna go through a full demonstration of the board view, but if you want in the upper right, I've got a much deeper dive of how the board view works. And what's nice is this just overlays on top of any of your calendars. So if I go back here in the upper right, I can go back here and choose week. And now I'm back to my normal week view. The second tip is one of my favorites and it's called snoozing your emails. So there's a bunch of mails from Bill Lumberg here. Let's select these. And you know what? He's kind of annoying. I want these mails to disappear from my inbox at least for a couple of days. So I've selected them here. And if I go up and I choose snooze, I can say, you know what? I want them to come back next week. Now, if I choose this, they're gonna disappear temporarily. And then Monday at 8 a.m., they'll reappear. So I can have a more relaxing weekend. So let's click this. Now all those Bill Lumberg mails are out of my inbox and they are snoozed away. Another nice thing, you can even choose custom dates if you want on when you want those snoozed emails to reappear. Now, if you wonder, gosh, where did those snoozed emails go? What if I wanna get back to them? Don't worry, there's a little folder here that's called snoozed. And if you go in here, hey, there's all my Bill Lumberg emails. The third tip is to delay sending of your emails by a certain amount of time. So let's say I've got a new mail message here. Now I have a mail here that I wanna to send to Bill Lumberg. I wanna impress him and make him think that I was working all weekend and it's gonna go out on a Saturday night. So I'm gonna go here and drop this down and choose send later. And I'm gonna choose Saturday and we're gonna set it to 10 p.m. So Bill thinks that I've been working at 10 p.m. on these TPS cover sheet updates. Now when I click send, this is gonna basically delay this until 10 p.m and then deliver the mail to Bill. So let's click send. Now that mail is gonna sit on the exchange server in the cloud and only get delivered at 10 p.m. So lots of options for delaying your emails. The fourth tip is using emojis and animated GIFs in your emails. Now I've got a boring email to Bill here about our TPS report offsite and I wanna spice it up a little bit. So if I go down here and click the smiley face, insert emojis and GIFs. So we'll open that up. Now maybe I wanna add a nice GIF. Choose the spot where you wanna insert it and I'm gonna search here. I love this GIF from Saturday Night Live. Freaking amazing. Now I've inserted it, it's a little more exciting and maybe I'll add a little emoji as well. So click on emojis, clear that out and let's give a nice little hearts on the smiley face. Okay, close this and my mail to Bill is ready. Let's send it. The fifth tip is the immersive reader in Outlook for the web. The Immersive Reader is an inclusively designed tool that can help all people with reading. It has many accessibility improvements and things like text-to-speech and other options. So I've got a message selected here, and if I go to the three-dot menu, you can see this show in Immersive Reader. So let's click this. You can see we reduce page distractions, makes the font much bigger. Down at the bottom, I can hit play and read it out loud. We are thrilled to announce that the Immersive Reader has fully rolled you can also change the voice speed right here, faster or slower, male or female voice. Some people want to read with not a white background. Maybe I want to make it black or there's other colors that I can choose. 
lots of options here. You can make the text size much bigger. I can scroll it up like this. I can also do things like line focus. So maybe I just want to look at one line at a time. There's various reasons that people need some of these extra supports when reading. The other nice thing is translation. So I'll make the font a little bit smaller here. Let's say I want to translate this mail to another language. Click on reading preferences, drop down translate, and we support over 111 languages. So maybe I want to go here and choose Spanish. We'll scroll down and then choose document. The entire mail is translated. And now when I read out loud, Estamos encantados de anunciar que Immersive Reader se ha implementado completamente en cuatro aplicaciones. So all of this is built right into that immersive reader. Go back to original here, and then I can close this by clicking the little arrow to exit. The sixth tip is enabling teams by default for any meeting that you create in Outlook. Now I'm going to go here to the calendar and I'll go up here to the gear, drop this down and then choose view all Outlook settings. Now on the calendar, what you're going to do is go to events and invitations and there's an option add online meeting to all meetings. Turn that on and then click save and then close. Now let's create a new event here. Give it a title. My status meeting invite some attendees. And as soon as I add an attendee, you'll note that this turns on teams meeting by default. So I don't have to always remember to turn that switch. Now I'm ready to send it out with the teams meeting enabled. Let's go. And right there is my status meeting. I click here and I can immediately just join that teams meeting from the flyout if I need to. The seventh tip is shortening by default the start or end times of your meetings, especially during remote work or remote schooling. Having back to back 30 minute meetings or hour long meetings can be rough. To do this, we're going to go to the upper right, click the gear down at the bottom, choose Outlook settings, then go to events and invitations. Now go here and check shorten duration for all events. So for example, I want to end events early, maybe for an hour long meeting. Let's end it at 50 minutes instead of the full hour. So I can set it by default for 10 minutes. Maybe I just want to end five minutes early, less than one hour. So for example, 30 minute meetings, I can choose to also, let's say five minutes. I want to end early. You can also drop this down and say, Hey, I want to start my events five minutes later. That means by default in this case, if it's less than one hour, when I create that meeting, it's going to start it five minutes later. So let's see how that looks. Click save and then close. So let's open up a new event here. Now look at the start time for this 30 minute event. Instead of starting exactly at 11 o'clock, it starts five minutes after. The eighth tip is teams meet now built directly into the Outlook web calendar. In the calendar here in the upper right, you'll see this meet now. And if I click this, it takes me immediately into the teams dialog and I'm ready to start my teams meeting. The ninth tip is bolder colors in your calendar. Now you can see here that I've got my outlet calendar. These are the standard lighter colors I've used. If you go to the upper right and click on the gear and then choose outlook settings down at the bottom, look at calendar under view here. You'll see event appearance by default. It's light. I'm going to choose bold. Maybe I want to have my calendar pop a little bit more. Now click save and close. Now you can see that these colors are much more bright and bold. Some people like this. They stand out just a little bit better in your calendar, make it easier to see things. The 10th tip is OneNote integration directly from Outlook web. In the top upper right, you'll see this little notebook icon, which is the OneNote feed. I can click this and it loads up all the notes that I have across OneNote, sticky notes and Samsung notes. Now you can filter right here as well. So I have OneNote pages, Samsung notes, or my sticky notes. I can also add sticky notes directly here. So if I click add note, remember to do my TPS report redesign and I can close this and that sticky note is added. This feed also shows up inside of OneNote and right here you have OneNote pages. So if I click here, this is a problem of the week. It launches me right into OneNote for the web to this page, which is really handy. And also in OneNote for the web, here's this feed. So if I click feed, the exact same notes feed loads here. And there is that yellow sticky note that I just added back in Outlook for the web. So really nice integration between Outlook and OneNote. The 11th tip is to do bar integration. In the upper right, you're going to see this little to do bar icon and I'm going to click this for my day. This opens up your to do bar right here on the right hand side. And this lets you be able to see your mail, your calendar and your tasks in one place. So right here you can see my calendar and everything is in a nice little compact view. I also have my date picker here and you can see calendar right at the top 
And it's showing me I can also drag things as a task. So I can drag a mail in. So here's something that's super interesting from Alex Wilbur. I'm going to drag it into add as a task. So now I've turned that email right into a task and you can see that to do right here is where I can have my tasks. I can go here and I can change the title if I want. I can star it as a favorite. And then also if I want to go back to my calendar view, I just click right here and now I'm back into my compact calendar view. You can even join Teams meetings. It has this right here. So if I have a Teams meeting coming up, I can easily stay in my inbox here and not have to switch to my calendar and go back and forth. The 12th tip is one of my favorite new features for Outlook in the web and it's being able to auto check for people's calendars. So I'm going to go to my calendar here. Now let's click new event. We'll give it a title and let's invite a couple of attendees. Alex, Ella and Henry. Now this suggested times is really nice. It says, hey, everyone's available at this time and that time or that time. And what's really cool is I don't have to open up their free busy and parse through all that information. Outlook can automatically figure this out. So let's say I want to choose Friday at this time. It also shows it right here on my calendar. It says everyone is available. Great. I'm going to just send this out. Just saved a bit of time. The 13th tip is themes. So I want to change my theme. It's kind of boring here. I'm going to go to the upper right, choose settings. And there are a bunch of themes right here. Let's click view all. It's got all these different themes. So if I click one, you know, unicorns and rainbows, one of my personal favorites. There's some Legos, a cat waving. There's some basic options, but you know, crayons. I like to be young at heart. So let's keep the crayons and keep it colorful. I like that theme. Looking good. The 14th tip is customizing your Outlook web toolbar. So right now I've got a set of buttons right here in my mailbox, for example. I can click the three dot menu right here and I'm going to choose customize. This brings up the toolbar customization menu and I've got a bunch of options. Let's say that, you know, I don't use sweep very often. I want that one to go away. I really like immersive reader and I like the ability to have flagging right in my face. Okay, let's click save. And now I've got a customized toolbar. The 15th tip is dark mode. Dark mode is great for accessibility needs or if you just want to look a little bit cooler, put yourself into dark mode. So I'm going to go to the upper right here, click the gear and here is dark mode. Let's just turn this on. Oh, look at that. That is looking good. Go to your calendar. Same thing. This is much easier on the eyes. The 16th tip is hiding the attendee list from people you're sending out the meeting to. For certain types of meetings and maybe their sensitivity, this can be useful to do. So I'm going to open up a new event here, give it a title and invite some attendees. Now drop down response options and I'm going to choose hide attendee list right here. What this means is that everyone who gets this meeting will not be able to see the other people who are invited to my top secret meeting. So I'll choose a choice here. We'll make it Friday at 205. Okay. Ready to send out. We'll click send. Now I'll sign in as one of the attendees so you can see what it looks like when the attendee list has been hidden. I'm signed in as Alex now and here's that meeting from Kara Coleman top secret. Okay. I'm going to open this up. Now I'm looking to see who else was invited. So over on the right, here's the organizer was Kara and the attendees. Okay. I'm Alex. Oh, the organizer has hidden the list of attendees for this event. Gosh, now I don't know who else is coming. The 17th tip is creating rules in Outlook for the web. Now I'm going to create a rule that anytime I get a mail from Bill Lumberg, I want to move it to a special folder and I want to set a TPS category on that email. First step is go to the three dot menu here, drop it down and choose create rule. Now it says always move messages from Alex. I want to create a different rule. So I'm going to choose more options. And this is going to be for all messages from, we'll change this to Bill Lumberg. Now the first condition is when it's from and we're going to remove Alex and instead type in Bill. There we go. We'll add an action. So first action is select an action. We'll say move to now select a folder. I'm going to move it to my special bill folder. So drop that down. There's the bill folder here. We'll choose this. Now we're going to add another action. This time we're going to say we want it to categorize that. Now I can select a category. Now there is no TPS report category, but I'll add new and we'll have it TPS report. And we'll make that bright green hit save. So every mail from bill will get moved to the bill folder and we'll categorize it with TPS report. Then click save. Okay. There's my rule. It is turned on. I could edit it. I can delete it, but right now I'm just going to close this and now we'll wait for a mail from bill. Oh, it looks like there's a mail that came into my bill folder here. Let's switch in there. 
Hey, there's my Bill Lumberg meal. Can you please come in to work this Saturday? Ah, and it's marked with a nice green TPS report category. The 18th tip is the sweep feature. This allows you to quickly clean up your inbox with just a single click or two. Let's go to the toolbar right here and you're gonna see sweep. So click this. Now I've selected a message from Alex and so it says for messages from Alex, I could say move all the messages from Alex from my inbox folder to somewhere else. By default, it has deleted items selected. I can drop this down and maybe I wanna choose, let's say archive instead. I could also say move all messages from this and any future messages from Alex. That's kind of like a rule. Maybe I just wanna keep the latest message from him and move the rest. Or maybe just I wanna move anything older than 10 days. That's kind of nice. It's automatically archiving that stuff that's 10 days or older. I'm just gonna say move all messages right now so when I click OK, all those Alex messages will disappear. So let's see what happens when I click OK. There, it cleaned them up. And now I've only got Kara message and Ella message. If I go to archive right here, there are the three Alex messages that were swept right out of my inbox. The 19th tip is customizing your quick actions. This is similar to what you can do in Outlook desktop. So I have a message selected here. When you hover these little options like delete, and mark as unread and flag and pin, these are what are called quick actions. And I wanna customize these. These are the default ones. If I go to the upper right and click the settings gear, then go down and choose view Outlook settings. Under mail, choose customize actions. Now here are the quick actions. You can see delete, pin, mark as unread and flag. Those are the ones that are chosen. Let's say I don't wanna see flag and I do wanna see archive and I don't wanna see pin. These little icons are quickly updated so you can see what it will look like in your inbox. So now I've got delete, archive, and mark as read or unread. When I click save here, now I will close. Now when I hover right there, these are different quick actions. So if I wanna archive this from Kara, I just click archive and it moves it right into this archive folder there. The 20th and final tip is weather location in your calendar. So right now it shows 70 degrees. This is in Redmond, Washington. So if I click this, I wanna edit this location. We'll add another location. Let's add Big Sky. Then click Add. You can also choose to make it in Celsius or not. So maybe I wanna show it in Celsius. And maybe you don't wanna see the weather at all. I could choose to turn off the weather completely if you don't wanna see that in Outlook. But by default, it's on. We'll turn this on and click Save and then Close. Well, you can see it's 13 degrees Celsius in Big Sky right now. And if I wanna see what it is in Redmond, click the little arrow and it's 21 degrees Celsius in Redmond. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you wanna keep up with all the latest videos I'll be releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell to keep notified for all the latest posts.